he was running for his life. So I turn around and obviously there was nobody there, but I knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that it was an angel. So we moved um, and we lived with my dad and I needed a job because I left New Jersey. And all the while, I always wanted to become a nurse, but that dream was kind of quenched and I thought it was dead. I thought the dream was dead, it was over. God showed me that your dreams and your goals never die. The Lord opened the doors for me. I said, I need a job. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna work for the city. And I looked through the, um, there was this uh, newspaper that was circulating and it was mainly for civil service jobs. I ended up applying to the police department of all, of all jobs. And, uh, but I still felt peace and calm. I never thought about law enforcement because my goal was to be a nurse, but I was, I was very limited um, because of my upbringing. I still didn't think that I could become a nurse. And so I kept myself back. So I took the job. I ended up going to the police academy, I, six months in the police academy, and I graduated and I became a New York City police officer. I was really, really proud, but I was a Christian. And so things were different being a Christian uh, police officer. God really kept me through 20 years of working for New York City Police Department. So I ended up retiring as a detective with the police department. I never believed in, you know, well, this is opening probably a, an avenue because some some of you probably have had negative experiences with law enforcement, but I have to tell you that the majority of law enforcement officers that I work with were so kind and had a passion for people. And I did too. And these were the ones that were not abusive because you know, you have bad apples everywhere in every job, every vocation, every profession, there is this corrupt. I carried the Bible, um, in my patrol car. I made very few arrests because I would talk to people. I said, you don't really need to do this. Of course. Um, you know, there were situations that, that I could not use my Bible immediately because there was danger, right, to other people as well as myself. But as a whole, I use the Word of God. Um, I would pray before I put on my uniform. I would pray with people in the street. They would literally calm down. <laughs> you know, some of them would go to church and some of them were raised in church but turned their backs to God. And a lot of them um, were made aware that, hey, God was still around and still loved them and was still interested in saving them. And he saved me too from several dangerous uh, situations. So I had a lot of peace when I went to work. I wasn't fearful of anyone or anything because I knew that the Holy Spirit resided within me. I was assigned to the 46th precinct in the Bronx, a very, very, uh, very, very violent uh, community. Lots of crime all the time, and that rhymed. I didn't have a car, so I had to take two buses home. And so as I get off the bus, now I was working, I had finished a four to 12. So by the time I get home, it's typically around 2 a.m. I'm getting off the bus and um, I remember I had a denim outfit on, I had my backpack, and of course I had my, off, my weapon and everything, my shield, everything was in my backpack. Get off the bus, nobody's in the street, and I hear, sing. And I'm thinking, sing? Sing what? So I started singing uh, songs that we sing in church. I hear a voice that says, sing louder. Okay, I figured I'm gonna obey because there's nobody in the streets. So I sang a little louder. And as I sing, I'm trying to kind of like accommodate my backpack and as I pull it up over my shoulder, because you instinctively turn your head, I see this young guy walking across the street and he's whistling like he's walking, you know, like it's daytime and he's walking along the park. I hear, the Holy Spirit say, he's following you. Sing louder. Now, now I'm getting a little afraid because I'm thinking, I already sized him up, but you know, I'm thinking, Lord, I have my gun. Not that I was going to shoot him, but you know, I said, oh my goodness, what? It, he's just saying, sing louder. And I'm singing loud. And I intentionally do the same motion to accommodate, you know, to move my backpack a little closer to my shoulder. And the Lord says, he's now behind you. Now he's giving me step by step. Now this is like a movie, folks. Who can make this up? So I'm singing, but at the same time, the fear is gone. And I'm singing. So now here's my building, and there are four steps to get into the first door. And I took three steps in one leap. <laughs> so as I take the last step, I open the front door. I quickly turn around. And I take another three steps up. 
now I face this young man who happens to be exposed and holding his penis in his hand because I can see it. But the funny thing is that he's not looking at me. He is staring at someone or something behind me and above me. And he had the look of terror on his face. His mouth was open. He, his face was shaking and he was absolutely terrified. And I get the sense that there was somebody behind me, very, very, very tall, because this young man was looking way above me, but behind me as if he's looking like I just did, looking up behind me. And he darted out, he just ran. He was running for his life. So I turn around and obviously there was nobody there, but I knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that it was an angel. You know, when I got into my apartment, I just got on my knees and I was just thanking the Lord for protecting me. And that's what the Lord does as well. He'll protect us from danger, from harm, you know, because we are his, but we also have to stay in tune with him, you know, by reading his word and staying connected. Thank you for watching this video and my mom didn't mention but she is a nurse and she's in fact now teaching and tutoring nurses in the making so she really did achieve the dreams that she had in her heart that God in fact put in her heart so I pray that this video encouraged you to keep dreaming keep pressing into one God's will and everything else will be added to your life.